President Biden is celebrating reaching one of his biggest legislative goals, signing a major infrastructure bill into law. But he would not have gotten it over the finish line without key negotiators in Congress, including House Majority Whip Congressman Jim Clyburn. And the congressman joins us now. He is a Democrat representing South Carolina's 6th District in the central and eastern part of the state. Congressman Clyburn, welcome. Uh, it's good to talk to you again. You played a key role in getting the bipartisan partisan infrastructure bill to the president's desk. And you told the state newspaper that at one point in these ongoing negotiations, House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said to you, I need you to talk to him, meaning President Biden, to explain to him where we are. Can you share with us some of what you told the president at that critical moment in negotiations? Well, thank you very much for having me. Well, you know, uh, the president and I uh, have a long-standing relationship that goes back for, for several years. Uh, and there, it's often uh, that um, uh, the speaker uh, will uh, sort of refer to me uh, at uh, times when she thinks I might be able to explain it to the president <laughs> a little better. I don't know uh, if that's the case, but in this particular instance, I have been meeting uh, with the various sides of the question. Uh, the speaker knew that. Uh, she and I discussed it. So she, rather than just try to do it herself, she just gave me the phone uh, for me to bring him up to date on exactly what I was doing, how I saw things, what I thought needed to be done in order to get the vote done that evening. And so that's all it was to it, uh, rather than her asking me a question and, and then relaying back to the president, it was much better for just the two of us to, to talk. Well, it, according to uh, the quote in the state newspaper, um, you said that you thought he needed to get on the phone with several people. Can right. you share with us at all? <laughs> Obviously, you probably don't want to give out names, but describe for us the challenge here, because you also told the state newspaper that, quote, you have got these tremendous overlaps that people uh, seem not to be conscious of, but I am conscious of these overlaps all day, every day. Can you elaborate sure. a bit more on what you meant by that? Because as we know, the divide within your party, the divides, plural, um, at, at one point seemed to be quite vast. Well, they're all vast. It's because we have a pretty big tent and a lot of the groups under that tent. And what I meant by that is that you take, for instance, my good friend Sanford Bishop, who I knew a long time before I ever came to the Congress. Sanford Bishop is a member of the Congressional Black Caucus. He's black. But he's also a member of the Blue Dogs. That's an overlap. Uh, there are a lot of members of the Congressional Black Caucus who are members uh, of the Progressive Caucus. Mm -hmm. Those are overlaps. So you've got to understand uh, how to really navigate through all of that. So I know that there are certain things uh, that Sanford Bishop will be in the minority in uh, inside uh, of the Blue Dogs uh, cau uh, caucus uh, because of his backgrounds and experiences. So sometimes you just have to sit down and see where the overlaps are and try to deal with that. Uh, and, you know, we got the uh, progressives, we got the uh, so-called New Dems, uh, Hispanic Caucus, Asian Pacific Islanders, Congressional Black Caucus. All these people come from their various uh, congressional districts, and they find solids uh, with each other, and they meet often. And so because of the different backgrounds and experiences, we're not like the other side. We got 58 members of the, of the Congressional Black Caucus. Uh, that are Democrats. They only have two African Americans uh, in the Republican conference. So you can imagine from that, uh, a lot of us are rural and a lot of them are urban. Different set of experiences. Um, so for people who don't know, by the way, uh, blue dogs, because that's not necessarily a term, uh, Congressman, that we hear a lot about these days. Those are conservative Democrats you're talking right. about. And I wonder if you can share at all, uh, I know you don't want to give out names of who it is that you asked the president to call specifically, but he is someone who clearly uh, listens to you. You are widely credited with changing the trajectory of his presidential campaign with what happened in South Carolina and his win there in the primary. Um, 
did he go ahead and make those calls after your conversation with him? Yes, he did. <laughs> he made the calls, uh, and I think it turned out exactly the way I told him I thought it would, uh, and we had the vote, uh, and we have now uh, had him sign, the, uh, it, sign it into law. So, you know, um, you know, <laughs> that, I, I'm not going to worry any further than that. He made the calls and it worked. All right, uh, let's turn to what's next here. So the House could vote on and pass the reconciliation bill as early as this week, but its future in the Senate seems far less certain. How pressing, sir, is the legislative clock right now? Well, it's very pressing. I think we need to do uh, Build Back Better because there are a lot of things in Build Back Better that, we should, uh, that need to be dealt with. Uh, and we're asking people to really uh, uh, do what's necessary for that bill to pass. Now, I think we will pass it. I think we're going to do well with it. But what I do know is that once it gets to the Senate, the Senate's going to change it. There's no question about that. Uh, but that's not anything we ought to worry about at this point in time. We need to pass the House with this bill uh, because there are things there uh, that need to get done. For instance, we need to expand uh, Medicaid. Now, what we did in this bill uh, that we're going to vote on is to create a, a, a new category under the Affordable Care Act that will allow, uh, allow people in these 12 states that did not expand Medicaid, that will allow them to get Medicaid or, or get health care uh, under the Affordable Care Act. That needs to get done. I was in Texas over the weekend. 731,000 people in Texas will benefit from that if we get that done. And that's very important to do. Uh, we're gonna have only $65 billion for broadband. <clears throat> there are other, uh, we need more than money than that for broadband. The child tax credit that's currently in force, it comes to a, a close by December 31st. We need to continue that. So we need to pass this bill to do that. So there's a lot in this bill that we need to do so I hope we'll pass this bill, get it over to the Senate, and uh, they ought to be able to get done what needs to be done uh, before the end of the year, and, and we'll be able to keep uh, people moving along without much disruption in their lives. Our time is running short, but as you know, Congressman, um, Americans have been paying higher prices at the grocery store, at the gas pump. Um, what would you like to see done from the Biden administration moving forward to help address these price increases that millions of Americans are experiencing? I think that we're probably going to have to tap out oil reserves in order to uh, drive the prices down. I think that um, uh, I agree with the experts who tell me that in Build Back Better, uh, the pressures, if we pass that bill, will put enough into the economy that prices will begin to go down. Uh, when you see inflationary stuff, that like we see it, uh, it's because it's a worldwide uh, shortage. Uh, the so-called, uh, right, you know, the trade uh, issues that uh, keep us uh, with the affordable uh, oil, uh, as well as other things. Uh, if, it's, if it's a shortage, uh, it's a shortage. Uh, and if you can't keep uh, commerce flowing across the seas, it causes a problem. So there's a lot of things that we can do, and I think the Biden administration will do what's necessary, uh, but uh, I hope that's done before uh, next summer. Finally, Congressman, Vice President Harris has received a chorus of support from within the administration after reports of tension um, in her office came out. Do you think the vice president is being treated fairly? Well, she has not said to me that she's being treated unfairly. I saw her on yesterday, we chatted uh, about a lot of things. Uh, she seemed to be upbeat, uh, in a very good mood. Uh, if all the things I have been reading are true, I don't think she would have been in as good a mood as she was yesterday. I think you saw the comments she made uh, during the bill signing. Uh, she seemed to be in pretty good mood to me. So I think that a lot of what we're reading and hearing has to do with, um, uh, uh, you know, the natural rivalries that develop uh, in the family. I have three daughters. And I sometimes uh, referee uh, rivalries that develop uh, among them. 
Rivalries, though, don't oh. often play out in the press in this way, uh, in, in these family situations, uh, hence the question. Uh, I'm afraid we're out of time, but it, it was great to have you on again. Congressman Jim Clyburn, thanks very much. Well, thank you very much for having me.